Hey everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay, so grab a paintbrush, let's paint some models. Paint along with me, have some fun, listen to me rant, all's good. Now, as most of you probably know, I finished my Orktober painting challenge and I was pretty much successful with painting my thousand points of orcs. And today I have started painting my next army, which is a thousand points of Necrons. It's Necron Vember, people. Necron Vember. And I'm excited. And Rubik has a ball. He wants me to throw. And that's it. So basically, sit along, and I'm going to be painting today. I'm going to work on some scarabs. Uh, 16 scarab swarms. So that alone is 240 points, my 1,000 points. Painting Necrons is much easier than Orcs. Not as many colors. A lot more points. Things are good. So let's get to it. So today, I will be painting some scarabs. Look at this. They're already pretty much painted. Uh, what I did was, I just show you guys the effect that I'm doing. It's not an effect more like just painting them quasi poorly but still what I'm doing is I'm priming them using um, army painters metal plate plate metal plate metal yeah and all I'm simply doing it comes up that color right and then all I do is hit it with the shade non oil like that brings it to life and when it dries it looks like this after I just do a quick dry brush to it Things are good. So today I'm going to start off by drive. I'm going to make sure that all the things are on the same level because I've been working on and off this week, building a bunch of guys. I built uh, I don't know, 25 more warriors. I built these 16 scarabs. Plus I have another one up somewhere. This is my beta model. So whoop. that crunch didn't sound too good. So, things are good. Yeah. I'm going to use this brush. Just a crappy dry brush. Some iron breaker. So, if we all had a good week, um, let's start off with last week. Let's see what happened in the last week. Halloween. Halloween was last Friday. And I predicted it was Elsa was that one person. Thank you very much for leaving the comments in the comment section down below, person, who said Elsa. Elsa was the name I couldn't remember from Frozen. And the funniest part was we only had 15 trick-or-treaters the whole entire night. It was unfortunate here in Canada, or at least where I was in southern Ontario, the weather was not good. There's a step right there. Done. Look at that. I love Necrons. Necrons are so much easier to paint than Orc. Especially these guys. 15 points of base. Look at that. It's just... Next. Um, so it was a good Halloween, but only 15 kids came because here in southern Ontario, the weather was not good. It was really cold. And you know, I said in my, in my video that typically I remember the first um, the first snowfall of the year being on that day. And it was basically snowing on and off the whole day. Like it was cold and like freezing rainy. It was not nice at all. Mm mm. Not nice at all. So, only 15 kids came. And out of those 15 kids, one of them was Elsa. So I felt really, I felt vindicated. The best part about it was, like, she was, like, kid number two or three. Out of all the kids that came, it was an Elsa. And I was like, oh, there's the first Elsa. And then another, no Elsa other came that night, unfortunately. But, uh, and then I didn't even know about this. Jimmy Kimmel, somebody referred to me as this. Jimmy Kimmel actually did a video on ways to, um, be polite and congratulate all the interesting kids' costumes when most of them were going to be Elsa. So it was really funny. So that was good. So yeah, it wasn't very busy. And, and what I do is I always just, I ration the candy at the beginning because I thought we were actually going to get kids. So I was giving like two candy bars, two of the mini candy bars to each kid. Then by the end of that, I was giving like five or six because I really don't want it. You know, that's a, I'm trying to cut down on my sugar. I eat too much sugar apparently. So I'm, uh, so I'm just giving it out. Those kids. And then always those tweens come. And I'm like, okay, the tweens. You know, they're not that young. but They're not that old. And then um, the teens come. And I'm like, all right, I got to be the light to the teens. I give them a few chocolate bars each. And then once the teens start coming, you know that Halloween's almost, you know, over for trick-or-treating. And those teenagers show up and they're, like, their costumes are pretty uh, low quality. So it's okay, you know. 
Well, that's the next step done. Man, this might be a short uh, sit and talk, as I call it, or paint with Jay. Copyright, Matt. Many were you, Matt. Um, so, what else? Today has been a busy day. Today's Friday. I've actually been, I'm filming on a Friday. I've been really behind this week. Work has been busy, and uh, I just had a lot of videos to make and stuff, so it's no, no excuses and stuff. Today's Friday. Uh, I started off Monday with a video. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but there was a video. On Sunday, there was a video. Sunday on the weekend, there was a video. So, yeah, life's good. No complaints. It's been a busy week. I filmed the battle report today. Um, one of the awesome Warp subscribers named What are you doing? Oh, sorry, I'm not pausing. I remember his name's Doug. His name's Doug, but I'm just watching Rubik, wondering what he's doing. Rubik, are you okay? Okay. Sorry. Uh, one of the awesome uh, Warp subscribers came today, named Doug. We had a great battle report, and. Uh, so he plays Dark Angels, and he brought his Dark Angels, and he plays a very similar Deathwing to what I play, so it'll be a good game. I play Orcs. I'm not going to ruin anything for you. Um, so that was good, so that'll be up next week. And I got my models today, which I'll be doing some reviews for. I'll be doing a review on the new Toxicrine. Um, right now I'm just taking Calor Blue, by the way, putting this to the eyes. Uh, the Toxicrine, and what's the other one called? The uh, Malice Scepter. Basically, uh, I'm a huge. I'm, I am a fan of the Toxicrine. I'm not the biggest fan of the Malaceptor. I don't think the Mal. I think the Malaceptor is a little too expensive compared to the other guys in the Elite slot. Personally, that's just my opinion. Um, the the Toxicrine is going to be, a, I think, a good addition. But it's really interesting now that Tyranids are getting so much love right now. You know, they're. I'm not used to Tyranids getting so much love outside of a Codex release. I know there were times that like models that were in the codex would get a you know release like when the Tyran effects Turbogon kit came out, but um, it's weird because like last week this sorry today the Maliceptor and the um, Toxicrine came out so it's two models that aren't in the codex, and then next week it's just been put up on GW as well that. Um, the, a new kit comes out that makes like two other things. It makes the drop pods. There's a new drop pod. It's called the Sporocyst or something. And it's cool. These guys. They need to. Um, the Sporocyst. And then another thing. It makes like a... Oh, I forgot what the other thing it makes. But yeah, it makes another thing as well. So that's four models that are being released in two weeks that are outside the realm of the Codex. Now, I'm kind of hoping that if people have digital Codexes, maybe it'll upgrade automatically. I don't have one for the Tyranids, but that would make me definitely start wanting to get digital Codices. If every time they released a new model, they just automatically insert it into the correct slot in the Codex, I would love that. That'd be worth the money right there. Instead of having to collect all the white dwarfs. Um, and then the other option, sorry, so that's, that just makes me a little suspicious, you know, because GW rarely does that outside of its codices lately. But Tyrants can't get a new codex. Or could they? I don't know. Their codex is sixth is very, very late sixth edition. You know, I think that it was January. It was what yeah, it was January, I think. So it's only eight months old. Nine months, you know, at most. Why is it getting some love? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't question it, maybe I should just accept it. Tyranids are getting some new models. That's good. I'm so happy that they're getting a spore pod back because they needed it. And that they're actually a model now. That's even better because it adds so much maneuverability and mobility to the army. So I'm done painting uh, my guys. All right, start basing time. That's all I'm doing for my color scheme. Matt, three color minimum. Because they're scarabs. My army is, is you know, I also show you my army next week because I'm going to be painting a bunch of warriors next week. I'll show you my color scheme. That's what I want for my, my... Oh, sorry, I'm going to do a little dot. Let's lighten up those spots, shall we? Um, so it adds so much man, uh, mobility and maneuverability to a codex that is really slow. And that makes me happy. You know, I, um, I don't think the Tyranids are a fast army. They're very slow and they're clunky. 
And uh, this will hopefully fix things by allowing, you know, the deep striking in. That's going to really, you know, you 20 gaunts in a spore pod. It's going to really help. Really help. Or a monster creature that you want to get to the opponent's side, drop them in. Good to go. So, that's, I'm really happy about that. I'm, I'm very happy about that. What else? This week's uh, painting tutorial for the warp, just so you, know, you guys know, uh, is Kefka Kaylee. I figured might as well, if you're going to do a paint a warcaster, might as well paint arguably the best warcaster in um, the game. So that's a cool tutorial. I had a great time painting her. She's a cool model. I really, really liked her. She was uh, fun to paint. But yeah, busy week. You know, I'm, I'm really enjoying where the warp and where my free content is going, but it's just keeping me really busy. Um, I'm, it looks like I'll be going to the Vancouver, oh, not Vancouver, what am I saying, the Vegas Open uh, this, year, ne this year coming up. So February, there's the Las Vegas Open. There's Rubik knocking stuff over. Um, the Las Vegas Open, it'll be cool. And uh, I'm already there. Like it, my, I was already there for a different conference for my wife. So, and it's the same exact time. So it's perfect. You know, it's just down the street from each other. And it's just perfect timing. So I'm going to be in Vegas. So if you're going to the Vegas Open in February 2015, you might see me there. Look for me. I'll be the awkward one bugging the WGC people. Austin, better look out. Justin Tan, if he's there. I'll make sure he's in every shot of everything. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been a busy, busy year. It's no, it's November right now, but of course, like the day after Halloween is when all the Christmas things start. So I feel like the year is already done. I feel like it's Christmas time right now. You know, it feels like it's starting to Christmas time. The commercials already out. Tyranids are getting new models, so that's kind of an early Christmas gift for me. I just ordered. I, I got my models today in the mail. And uh, my model, and the White Dwarf and everything. And then I looked at the Games Workshop website, and it's just like, oh, great. And I got a pre-order next week's stuff. I'm really curious, So what, as I said, what they're going to do with the Tyranids. I think we're gonna, all going to sit back and find out. And, uh, yeah. But I'm really happy about this Sporo Assist. Painting these guys makes me think, you know, I just, it really makes me reevaluate, like, I like this, these guys, and this is all I want to do with them. I'm not, I don't want to, you know, they have three colors in them. They have two blues, two silvers, you know, dark and silver, whatever. But I, that's all I want to do with them. They're not, they're not a very complicated model. I don't want to overcomplicate it with a lot of paint colors. You know, sometimes the model doesn't warrant the amount of paint people put on. And, uh... It got me really thinking when I started putting these together about three color minimum, you know. Um, I was recently talking with one of the really cool guys at my local gaming store about three color minimum because he is not a painter. He isn't. And I looked at his models and they easily met three color minimum. They did. And he worked really hard on them. But, you, you, you know, they were basically three color minimum, but he worked really hard. So that's really good. You know, and I say that, you know, paint jobs sometimes are overrated. And I, it just, it seems like three color minimum can sometimes be an arbitrary value. You know? Why three? Why not four? Why not two? You know? I guess some, 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 someone sat down sometime and said, three color minimum. That's, that's a paint job for a tournament. Three color minimum. You know, and I just, I, I'm okay with not mod, painted models. Of course, I like soft scores. I'm a big fan of soft scores in tournaments. And people who bring on painted models just, you know, lose points in soft scores, but they can have a fun time and play the game. And if they win all their games, they're probably going to lose points and soft scores, and then they don't win the tournament overall, but they might win best general. Because best general has nothing to do with your paint job. It shouldn't. You know? So. I don't know. It got me thinking. Is three enough? Is three too much? What do you guys think? Leave a comment in the comment section down below what you feel about three color minimum. You know, and there's always those people that, like, because not everyone likes to paint. Not everyone is good at painting, you know, and, and 
The guy obviously spent time getting his... He was actually Necrons too. And he obviously spent time to me. And I would appreciate... when I, If I was judging his paint work, I would have... You know, knowing him and just discussing what he, and how much time he has, I would actually say, you know what? He did a good job based on the amount of time he had to paint his models. You know? Sorry, I just have to take every little while Rubik comes back with this ball and I like to throw it back to him. But uh, that's it. The guys are painting. Let's do some basing. Um, but that's it. You know, I just, I feel any background noise is Rubik. Um, if you, as long as you work hard, you know, I don't feel, I, I, I like when I go to tournaments, I like checking out everyone's paint jobs. I really do because I'm a painter at heart and I, Rubik is just breaking everything. Hey Rubik, what are you doing? No, put that down. Play with your ball. Ball is good. So I like to, this is kind of funny. Like Rubik's going to just take over the entire show. Um, Rubik, lay down. But uh, yeah, I just, I like to go around and check out the paint jobs. I don't ever, you know, I'm never one of those people. I, I appreciate the time and effort people put into their models, regardless of the level of their painting. I really hate it when people paint shame. I call it paint shaming, but it, there's probably a real term for it. But like, you know, sometimes when you go to turn, people look down on the lesser painted armies. And I'm like, why are you doing that? You know, their skills may not meet your skills, or they may just not have the time. It really annoys me, you know? I'm a hobbyist, so I really appreciate the good, but I don't pick on the not so good. You know, in fact, I've been to a couple of War Machine tournaments where you can walk around and it'll, it's actually hard to find painted models. Um, it can be really hard. So, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't like that. I hate it when people put down people because they're army. I really don't. I think people should focus on the good, but don't, don't be mean because as I said, it, not everyone has the same amount of time or money or paint skills or dedication, you know? Some people just want to put an army together and go have a fun time at a tournament, and if that's the case, you can. You know, that's my logic. And as I said, soft scores are usually the um, the equalizer, except, for example, there's a big tournament in Peterborough uh, recently, and apparently the winner of it had a borrowed army, but it was very well painted. So it's one of those interesting situations where I don't really know what to think. Because soft scores in that case would help the person. But it's not their fault. They, they board a nice army. You know, it's just an interesting situation. Mm -hmm. Listen, I like soft scores. I'm a really big fan of soft scores at tournaments, which is why I don't play War Machine tournaments, because there's not really soft scores. Um, I love soft scores, because it not everyone goes to the tournament for the same purpose. You know, it's not always to win. It's to have a great time. For me, it's just to meet people, have a great time, Get to see some armies. Have a great time. That's what I said. You know, I don't have to win to have a great time. I really don't. And I can lose all four games. And I can, you know. And I've won best four, as I said, many times. Because that's probably why. I just go to have a great time. But soft scores are what keeps me in it. Because it gives you, you know, it gives, it rewards those who spend a lot of time on their armies and paint them and make them look nice. Which is great. It rewards those people that are really good at uh, what they do. You know, if they play a game really well, they'll win best general or something, or, you know. But also, soft scores kind of keep people, uh, soft scores keep people nice, I think. Because when there's best sport, of course there's politics involved. You know, people vote for their friends for best sport, or people vote for, you know, I don't know. The one, it does happen sometimes that if you, if you don't let people bend the rules, I've heard, in certain tournaments, like they'll they'll vote you down because they, they consider you a poor sport. But I don't know the way I play. I don't really care. I'm pretty you know I'm pretty easy going when it comes to like mulligans. If you you know made a mistake in your movement and you realize it pretty quickly and you say oh can I can I redo that movement? I'd, I'd say sure. You know, it's not it's, I don't well of course I play 40k. It's not as cutthroat. But um, hmm. I don't know. I'm pretty easy going. That's why I said I like soft scores. But 
that's a great thing. Like I love my job, and I can't complain because I get to play. And I get to play for fun. I get to play on my own terms, and people know that I'm not a cutthroat player. I don't, you know, I'm not a win at all cost player. So people don't bring those kind of lists against me very often. It did occasionally happen at mini wargaming, where someone would like set up a list to play Owen. And then they'd have to play me in the end, and like there was a huge discrepancy because they were bringing like cutthroat killer lists, and I was like, "Hey, let's have a fun list." But it happens, you know. Nothing wrong with that. But people usually come in to play against me, expecting to have a good time, be friendly, you know, be civil. And ninety-nine percent of the time, that happens, and that's good. Sometimes, uh, at Mini Wargaming, it was, it was hard sometimes because some people got very stressed about being on camera and being on the internet. Because the internet can be a very cruel mistress sometimes. Um, you make a mistake and sometimes you get flanked. And that's the thing. Like, being an internet person like I am, I'm kind of used to it. But... Um, So throw the ball for Rubik. Um, yeah, you know, and sometimes I'm playing, like, I've played against kids, and then the internet destroys the, the kids. And I'm like, dudes, come on, be more nice. It's a kid. You know, our job is to, is to make the game more popular, not put down kids who make mistakes. You know. That's the thing. So sometimes people get stressed out about being on camera, and that stress, um, you know, it just it puts them in a not a sour mood or anything, just a stressed mood, you know. And then they want to do their best because you know they want to win. They're being watched on camera. It's just so I understand that. But after playing so many games, you kind of lose the. Well, for me, at least, I, I don't know. I oh, I didn't really ever have the desire to destroy anybody or anything like that, but I didn't care about winning. If I have a great time, I had a great time playing with my opponent. I really like games that are close. Battle reports that are close tend to be my my favorite ones. You know, not the blowout ones. Um, the ones that are close. The ones that, you know, that both people could have won. The strategies were good. The dice rolls were relatively good. And the score ended up being really close. It wasn't just a game that you can easily look at the armies in the, at the beginning of the game and be like, okay, they're winning. Turn two. Which, you know, yeah, that's what I like. Nothing wrong with being a competitive player. Just not me. You know, no one's better or worse. No, no reason for playing a game is better than any other. And I really like this... Um, I've been watching the series by Ash on, at Mini Wargaming. Uh, for what's it called? The Garage? No. The Workshop? It's called The Workshop. I forgot what it's called. Sorry, Ash. I really like it. He just talks about these kind of things. But what people play games about, what people build their, what companies build their products around, you know. He brings a really interesting, um, I really like Ash. A mini war he brings an interesting layer to the to the mini war gaming people because he has the experience of working at Game Workshop. And by the way, for those who haven't seen it, go check out. There's a video that was posted. I think it was last week called the Mini War Gaming. Uh, it's by all the guys at Mini War Gaming minus Matt and Dave because it was filmed when they were at Valhalla, and it was hilarious. It is easily my favorite video that Mini War Gaming has ever made. And it was really cool make, seeing the video because it doesn't have Matt or Dave in it. And it's just really fun. And there's so many v movie references. There's more than I can count of movie references in the, in the video. And it was so well done. I thought it was hilarious. I was just rolling on my butt laughing for minutes upon minutes upon minutes. I loved it. So go check it out. Mini War Gaming.
And that's Rubik again. I apologize if you have headphones on, people. Uh, what's it called? Oh, I really, I'm sorry, Ash. If, if Ash is a, or people who like Ash is watching this, uh, I forget the name of his show. But it's really good. I really like his show. And for those of you who are wondering, I do watch. I continue to watch most of Mini Wargaming's content. And I really like Ash's stuff. Ash, to me, is a really... I'm, I'm glad he came in after I left. He wasn't my replacement or anything. I don't know. He was not lined up, obviously. Like, I didn't... I wasn't fired or anything. I just... I moved. But, um... He's a really good guy. He seems to have such a positive spirit. You know, positive attitude. And he really loves painting in the hobby. And that's just really cool. You know? So, I continue to watch Mini Wargaming. I wish them nothing but the best. And, uh... Yeah. That's all I have to say. They're good guys. You know, I wish them well. That's it. People wonder, you know, if I still watch their stuff. And I do. I'm, I'm still a Warp subscriber. And, of course, I'm a Warp subscriber. I created the Warp. I'm still a Vault subscriber as well. And um, right now I'm just painting some thinned black over my uh, sand. I use two different colored, two different kinds of sand. And I'm just going to get some texture to it, and then I'm going to go over it with a gray. I'm, I know gray and silver too close, really. It was kind of a mistake, but it was the army that I, the color scheme I designed a long time ago. And I'm going to keep it consistent. I had a great time playing in a Necron battle report earlier in the week. I did a Necron versus Orcs battle report, using primarily the models that I painted during my painting challenge. And it was cool. Because, again, like it's just awesome seeing your models that you spent so much time with on the table, finally. And, yeah, you know, hard work. I like these, but by the way, if anybody ever wonders, I don't actually have anything pre-listed in my head of what I'm going to talk about. I literally just turn on the camera and start talking, which is probably, sound, which is probably why I come off as an incredibly random person. That's okay, because I'm pretty much a completely random person anyway. Hey, do you want me to get the ball? I would throw the ball. Pretty good ball. Yeah. What else? On Halloween, I, uh, I dressed up my dogs. Rubik was wearing an elephant costume. He also has a Captain America costume, but we just couldn't find it. And uh, Spock, we of course had to buy the hot dog costume. Because he's a dashend. You gotta do it. He's a wiener dog, gotta buy a hot dog costume. And he was adorable. I really should post the pictures. But I think that uh, right now I've been doing a lot of heavy thinking about the warp and the future of my channel. And I am, I'm very happy with the level of, you know, the uh, of both of them right now. I, I'm, you know, the, my free channel is growing pretty quickly and soon, it, you know, I'm pretty sure, like, another four or five months, I'll be at 20,000 subscribers. Maybe sooner than that, but... Um, that's very cool. I'm really happy with the progress, since, especially since I left Mini Wargaming. It, like, it's taken off like a rocket. And that's awesome. You know, I, the, my work has been paying off. and That makes me feel good. It, I don't do this for the money, obviously, but I... Uh, But it's nice seeing some great results from work that you put really hard work into, you know? <laughs> it really is. You know, when I see the subscriber, like, I've gained 5,000, I think, subscribers since leaving Mini Wargaming. It's been pretty crazy. I've gotten 400,000 views. I couldn't imagine that. You know. But it's been really cool. That was one of the pros of, of me leaving was that I got to focus so much more on my own content. And I was kind of, I wasn't neglecting it by any means when I was working there, but it was hard because I was so busy. And now that I can only work two jobs. You know, back then I was doing three jobs technically my own channel, me working in my other job, and now I'm just doing two jobs. So that's good.
My subscribers are awesome. That's what I keep saying. You know, I have the best subscribers in the world, and I will always feel that. And maybe I'll get to meet some of you guys in Vegas. I'm going to Vegas. Uh, it looks like I should be going. Now, that's not for sure. But I'll probably be going to Adepticon and Gen Con again next year. Which is very cool. Uh, and then the Vegas Open. That'll be my, my conferences for the year. And eventually I would really like to go down to England. Not down. Technically up or sideways. Sideways to England. Let's go sideways to England. I'd like to visit some people. And I do have... Uh, some, some subscribers. I know that I, I, I talk to them sometimes every now and then. There are some really cool people in England. And I would like to go to Great Britain, you know, and, and see them. Because I've gotten to meet many of the American uh, subscribers and some of the Canadian subscribers. But um, the popularity of my channel is Canada, United States, and, and Britain, and Germany. And are the primary four color countries, and then Australia as well. And I would love to go to Australia. People in Australia, if I, if I can go some there someday, I'd love to too. Especially this time of year, where it's nice and warm. You know, that would be awesome. I would love to go meet people and just have some fun, bring some, you know, play some games. Though I promised my wife that if I ever end up going to Britain, which could be next year, you never know. I don't know what the, the future has in store. If the, my free content and the warp take off faster in the future, you know, if they, if they you know, grow exponentially one month, maybe I'll be able to go and go visit the people in England. Though I must warn you people, I've been told by one elderly woman that I'm quite the sticky wicket. I don't know what that means. But, uh, British people, stick your wicket, me, Jay. So I hope that when I go, if I go visit you all in Britain, I'm not a sticky wicket. It doesn't sound like a good thing. It's probably a bad thing. It sounds, it sounds to me like a wet blanket. I don't know, maybe it's not the same thing, but... I don't know. These things, by the way, sticky tack on a can base or a can lid keeps your hands from getting dirty when painting bases. It's kind of fun. It's more like basing with Jay this week. Well, I did painting. I did. I started with painting, but of course, Necron uh, things are so much fun and easy to paint. Yeah. I'm gonna probably call it soon because it's going. To, I'm gonna probably call after like the 40 minute mark. I need to go. Uh, there's so many videos I need to film today. It's just insane. And I need to get them done before tomorrow. It's been a busy week, really busy week. But it's like all these videos are gonna come out in the next couple days. Uh, I filmed a cipher review, which should be up today or tomorrow, on the cipher data slate for Dark Angel slash Chaos. He's pretty cool. He's a cool guy. You know, he's basically the definition of the fallen. So, that's cool. This has been a fun. This has actually been one, a good painting with Jay because I just keep throwing the ball for Rubik, right? and he just keeps bringing it right back. Rubik's a good dog. He really is. Oh, for those of you who want to know, Mandy is still doing okay. She's still not out of the woods. We every couple days she has like a bad day, and then we like oh, but she's still better. She's still alive, and we thank you. And I, I thank you for those people who you know left comments about that. So she's still alive and doing okay. Um, so that's good. I'm obviously very happy with that. What else has happened over the last week? A lot of leaves. Man, um, my house has a giant tree in front of it. And I've had to put out 25, no exaggeration, because I still have five more to put out, 25 so far. 
leaf bags in my lawn. And I'm not done. I still have probably another five, as I said. So, holy leaves. That's just a lot of leaves. The problem is my house has a fence. It's a weird... Uh, like, it's hard to describe my house, the front of my house, but it has a fence line and all the leaves, the, the winds are very strong and they pick up the leaves of all my neighbors and blow them and they hit the fence and stop in front of my house. So I've had to do a lot of leaving. I bought a leaf blower. That's kind of cool. Maybe you shouldn't trust Jay with a leaf blower, but still, it's been good. I'm figuring out my Christmas plans already. You know, it's weird thinking about Christmas time already. Because Christmas is the very end of the year. And it makes you think that it's less than two months left of the year. So. You know, my Christmas plans. I'm probably going to take a week off at Christmas so there won't be any videos. But it's okay. I think you guys will understand. Everyone will be busy with their families and stuff. Alright. Well, I'm going to probably call it here. It's a little bit shorter of a painting with Jay. But, uh, yeah, leave your comments in the comment section down below what you think. What do you think about the three-color minimum? Is it worthy? Is it good? Is it just an arbitrary value? What do you think about people shaming other people about paint jobs? I don't like it. I don't like to shame people about paint jobs. No. Do you think I should go to Britain? I think I should go to Britain. Do you think? I don't know. Leave a comment. Comment section down below. So, thank you very much, as always, for watching and listening to me rant for this uh, Painting with Jay. I apologize it's a little shorter than usual. Usually it's about 45 minutes. Today's it's about 35 plus minutes. Uh, I just have to go get a couple of videos filmed today, but I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, by the next week, I'll have all the scarabs painted, and I'm going to be painting some warriors for my thousand point Necron uh, painting challenge, and it's really cool. Come on, I'm getting a lot of models painted, so thank you so much. Leave a comment in the comment section down below what you thought about any of the topics I randomly thought of over the top of my head. You know, I think I should go to Australia and Britain one day. Britain in the summer, Australia in the winter for me, summer for you guys. That'd be good. And I apologize for all the noise Rubik's making, but he's a fun dog. So thank you so much for watching. Please like the video. Comment in the comment section down below. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting with Jay.